I have a story to tell you. And the story is about you. You didn't know I was paying attention, did you? But, but first of all, we have to decide, are you qualified to be part of the story? So how many of you have made a purchase in the last 24 hours? Okay, so most of you qualify. Uh, all of you have probably made a purchase in the last seven days. So, so this story really is about you. And like any good story, it's really a story within a story within a story. There are a lot of small stories within a longer narrative. And, and the first small part of the story is about something that you all just admitted to doing. It's about making a purchase. You bought something. And, and as you experience that purchase, you develop some level of satisfaction or, or dissatisfaction as the case may be. And, and you have an attitude toward the brand and the product. And as a result, you develop an intention of how to behave the next time you buy it. Be because nearly everything we buy, we don't just buy it once, we buy it again and again and again. So this is what brands want. Brands want for you to make a purchase, be really satisfied, have this attitude that you love the brand and they're a great brand and they do great things for you, and then intend to buy it again, and guess what? To buy the product again and to do this over and over and over. And this is what brands really want. And this is the big story. The story is the search for loyalty. And, and when that process works, this is what happens. Notice your first purchase was this, this purple color. And all these purchases are that purple color. And so what you end up with is you end up with this crowd of loyal customers. They love you. They buy your product again and again and again. They wouldn't consider buying another brand. They tell your friends how great you are. But this isn't what always happens. What really happens looks more like this. And, and when I say this is the search for loyalty, brands have spent billions of dollars seeking that loyalty, seeking that group of customers that comes back again and again and again. But this is what really happens. So what did we do about this? First, we looked at it and said, you know, I think satisfaction's the key. If you can really satisfy your customers, they're gonna come back. They're going to be loyal. But satisfaction did not predict loyalty. Satisfied customers defected. They, they went and bought another brand. Well, they said, okay, satisfaction's a, a pretty narrow measure. Let's measure attitudes. That, that's a broader, bigger measure. It, it measures satisfaction and it also measures liking and beliefs. And, and we'll measure attitude. And attitude is going to predict behavior. Attitude did not predict behavior. People with positive attitudes bought somebody else's brand. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll go to the next stage. We'll measure intentions. We'll go ask people, the next time you buy this product, how likely are you to buy this brand? And many of them said, oh, I love this brand. I, I'm gonna buy it again. But then when you go back and measure what they really bought, they weren't loyal. They were disloyal. Now think about what this means for a brand. You have done everything you possibly can. They're satisfied. You ask them, are you satisfied? On a scale of one to five, how satisfied are you? Oh, it's a five. I'm really satisfied. You ask them, what do you think about the brand? Do you like the brand? Oh, I love the brand and the brand loves me. And, and you say, what are you gonna buy next time? Oh, I'm gonna buy this brand. And then they don't. And, and this really happens in the marketplace. So the question is, what happened? I, for instance, there's one product category we've measured, 73% of the people say they're very likely to buy the same brand again, yet less than 30% are brand loyal on their next purchase. So what happened? Well, we wanna know what went wrong when we measure this. In, and one of the things we speculated is maybe they're just bad measures. Maybe we're not doing a good job of measuring intention 
Maybe we need to measure this differently. Well, there's some of that. No matter what tool you use, there's going to be some measurement error. So there's some of that, but not much, and not enough to explain the behavior in the marketplace. We said, okay, maybe it's barriers. There are real barriers to purchase. If you ask people, why did you switch? They tell you things like, well, we moved, and there's not a dealer in this town. Or, I went to the grocery store, and they were out. My brand wasn't available. So there are some barriers to purchase, but not nearly enough to explain the behavior we see in the marketplace. Well, there's another potential answer. Maybe they're deceptive responses. As consumers, when we ask you, are you going to buy that brand again? Well, maybe you're not telling us the truth. Maybe you want me to feel good. Oh, of course I'm going to buy your brand again. And there's certainly a little bit of that, but we know that there's not much. And I know that these three things don't explain the differences. One way we know this is we found the predictor. Uh, Jeff Hess at Cal Poly in uh, California and I, through years of research, we found a predictor. And the predictor was relationships. Now, when people buy a product, we, we have some who are really satisfied and some who aren't. Forget about the ones who aren't satisfied. I, I'm not worried about them right now. I don't expect them to come back. The ones who are satisfied but still don't have a great attitude towards your brand, forget about them. I don't expect them to come back. The ones who, for whatever reason, say, yeah, I like it, but I'm not going to buy it again, forget about them. Let's focus on this one group, the ones who really have strong intentions. And if you measure them, the ones who have strong relationships with the brand, they're loyal. Not all of them, but most of them. The ones who have weak relationships are disloyal. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Now, the, the three possible explanations I gave you should really act equally on these two groups, but they don't. The ones with strong relationships come back. So the question is, what happened? I can predict it, but I haven't answered yet what happened. Well, to answer that question, I, I have to introduce you to Lyle. Th this is Lyle, and, and I just have to tell you, Lyle is perhaps the best dog ever. <laughs> Lyle is a great dog. And, and he would be here today, but I was afraid he would steal the show. So uh, he's waiting at home with his flying disc. And Lyle loves to chase his flying disc. He loves it more than anything else. And Lyle goes and chases the flying disc, and he catches it, and he brings it back. And I throw it again, and he catches it and brings it back. So one day we're out, and I throw the flying disc, and it's sailing perfect throw, and Lyle is chasing it. He is intent on catching that flying disc. And what happens? <laughs> Squirrel! Man, Lyle takes a 90 degree turn, the flying disc disappears out there, he runs off, the squirrel goes up the tree, uh, the squirrel did get away, no squirrels were harmed uh, in, in this tale, uh, and Lyle comes back, and, and he's so happy, and he comes back, and I said, dude, where is the disc? And you could see him, disc, disc, the disc, where's the disc? Oh, the disc, oh yeah, the disc. And he looks around for it. Okay, you may wonder at this point, what does this have to do with consumers and brands in the marketplace? Well, think about this. After uh, the, the milk is gone, but, but what did the milk make, make me think of? It made me think of cookies. We all like a good cookie, so, so let's go to the store and get some cookies. I'm going to get Chips Ahoy. I had them last time. They were really good. I'm going to get Chips Ahoy again. I'm going to get me some Chips Ahoy. I'm going to get me some Chips Ahoy. I'm going to get Chips Ahoy. Squirrel! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ooh. Fudge stripes. Oreos. Pecan sandies. Now, wait a minute. What was I going to buy? You know, what was I after? Let me think. Consumers get distracted. We, we are easily distracted. And... We don't always come back to what we were going to buy. And you can say, oh, wait a minute, that's just cookies. 
Cookies don't really matter. How important a decision are cookies? Let's talk about cars. We need a new car. Well, okay. We, we're driving a Chevrolet. It's been really good. I like the Chevrolet. It's been reliable. We're going to buy another Chevrolet. Okay. We get in the car. We're going to the dealership. Oh, my. I didn't know there was a Nissan dealer here. Did, did we even think about Nissan? Oh, wait a minute. To Toyota. That's Toyota. Ford. Uh, BMW. Ooh. Uh, squirrels in the marketplace. You know, all of these. This is along a two-mile section of, of Interstate 10 between where I got on and where the dealership was. Two miles. And these are the distractions. You don't even have to get in the car. These occurred within 75 feet walking through the parking lot. You know, I'm going to my car. Okay, let's see. I'm going to go to the Chevrolet dealer, test drive the Chevrolet. We're going to buy this new Chevrolet. Ooh, Toyota, Honda, Lexus, Ford. I can see myself in a Maserati. Yeah. <laughs> Subaru. Well, squirrels in the marketplace. Okay, one, one more example because whenever I think about buying cars, I get hungry. There's, there's just something about spending all that money. So, so let's go get something to eat. Yeah, let's, you know, what are we going to eat? Uh, it's been a long time since I've been to Double Dave's. Let's, let's go to Double Dave's. Okay, we're getting in the car. We're going to Double Dave's. Um, but Double Dave's is not the closest place. I get on the freeway, and we're driving. We're going to, we're going, we're, wait, there's Rudy. Ooh, barbecue, pizza, Taco Bell. Crispy tacos, squirrel. Once again, short distance driving down the freeway. So what's going on? We, we go out. We have good intentions. We know what we're going to do. But it's these squirrels in the marketplace, these distractions that distract us away, and we're those disloyal customers. And if you'll think about it, We've all been disloyal customers. We've had brands that we thought we were going to buy, and we've come home with something different. So the question is, what, what does this really mean? Well, first of all, think about this in terms of brands. What do you want to do as a brand? You want to make your customers really happy. You want to satisfy those customers. You want them to love you, and you want them to know that you love them. And we really do as brands. But they get distracted. So the question is, how do you keep your customers from getting distracted? And that's a title for another talk. But the other side of the coin, what if I'm a new brand and all those customers out there already have their favorite brands? Well, you know what? I have to become the squirrel in the marketplace. I have to figure out how to distract you and make you forget about that flying disc and come chase the squirrel. So that's what it means for brands. But then, what does it mean for us as consumers? Um, I mean, I, honestly, we started this research trying to help brands figure out how to make customers more loyal. But I think about it as a consumer. What does this mean for me? It, is this good for us as consumers? And there's hope. And one reason there's hope is, I, I told you we found that relationships keep you loyal, that, that they induce you to avoid those distractions. Well, you know how you create those relationships? You really, really satisfy customers. You make them really happy. You do the things that make them trust you. So for brands to keep us loyal, what this research shows, they have to treat us really, really well. But it, it also means that a lot of times we make a decision. We, we derive this intention. Okay, I'm going to go buy this. And then we don't. And, and this happens more than the loyalty for a lot of product categories. And, and what that tells me as a consumer is maybe I'm not always making my own decisions. It feels like I'm making my decisions. It feels like I'm the one in, who's in control. But maybe I'm not always in control. And if we think about what that means for the rest of our lives. So, so what we have found 
is in terms of purchases in the marketplace, we make decisions, we have an intention, and then we don't follow through. We don't do that. Well, how many decisions do we make in our lives that we weigh all the facts? We, we know what we want to do, we make an intention, but then we don't follow through on the intention. So maybe, maybe these distractors in the marketplace are really a lot like the rest of our lives, and, and we need to think about how we make those decisions. So, that's the story. I, I have something for you to take away with you. It, it's a tool that, that you can pull out and use from time to time. And, and what I want you to think about is when you've made a decision and you have that intention I want you to think about Lyle and, and think about what you really want to do because those distractors are in the marketplace and sometimes you want to focus and go chase that flying disc, but every now and then maybe you want to chase the squirrel. But ultimately, we need to decide what are we going to do? Is today the day we're going to get the disc? Or today, are we going to get a lot more pleasure out of going out and chasing that squirrel?